In this video, I'm going to try and make a whole song inside only one Serum 2 preset. And no, not one whole song using just Serum 2, because that's baby food. That's me on a normal day. I mean an entire song. Drums, bass, leads, effects, even sidechain compression, all contained within a single Serum 2 preset. How's this even gonna work? If you're looking to get your music to sound clean and professional just like your favorite artists, well, you should probably learn how to do mix downs. <laughs> and once you've learned that, to take it to that final polished level, you can use this video's sponsor, Mixia. Mixia is by DistroKid, and you can use it to put the finishing touches on your new track in minutes. Also, because it's through DistroKid, you can easily upload through streaming services, and the master will be optimized for those streaming services. So, how does this work? For $99 a year, you get unlimited mastered tracks. All you gotta do is upload the file, listen, customize, and download the finished track. From there, you can head straight to the upload form on DistroKid to upload your newly mastered track. Plus, if you're worried about, oh, I don't know if it sounds good, you get unlimited song previews of those mastered songs and a free download on top of that. So, use my VIP link to get additional discounts and thank you to Mixia and DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to it. Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to the channel. Serum just got a huge update with Serum 2, and it's extremely versatile. Its updated oscillator functions have expanded past just wavetables and now includes granular and spectral synthesis. There's also multi-sampling, which essentially makes this an everything synth now. They have these multi-sample oscillators where it just straight up has full drum kits. Which is really exciting, but personally, I've never gotten too deep beyond basic sound design, so it's a lot for me to take in. However, I saw Nettie post on Twitter this song in one preset. Now this is the type of production shenanigans I love. Setting up systems that create unconventional results using the tools that are already available to us. So if you're ready to figure it out along with me, smash that like button. Or if you'd rather be a sound design fiend, smash the like button anyway. What are you most excited about with Serum 2? Let me know in the comments. Or if you're shy, leave an emoji representing pain, cause you know, engagement. All right, enough yap, let's get into it. Start with init patch. There we go, Serum's most basic. Let's just start with a BPM and then let's just write a chord progression. It's gonna be really tough for me because I'm gonna have to learn new hotkeys, I'm pretty sure. Okay, that's the same, using shift. This'll be a lot of me trying to figure it out as we go along. This FL Studio piano roll? Wait, it is, you're right. That's right, the one thing FL had over Ableton? Not anymore. Cry more, FL heads. Hey, okay, we got some sounds. Stop. Okay, it's really awkward because the space bar is both mapped to Ableton playing and Serum playing. Bro, this is the final boss of producing. What am I doing? Okay, let's play it with the bass. Oh, why is it not? And here's where I ran into a little problem where multiple clips wouldn't play at the same time. Okay, so there's also trigger mode here. And if we go poly, then we can play both of them. Is this like a looper in Serum 2? Yes, that's the crazy part. Let's make this a nicer sound. Give it a bit of unison. Yeah, so the piano roll is just inside clip here. How crazy is that? So now, because we have the different oscillators, let's add some drums. So I know that we can do multi-sample and then go into the drum kit. But I'm wondering. Okay, see, I don't want it to do that. So right now what's happening is the notes that are being played by this are activating the drum. So Serum 2 has oscillator mapping as well which means we can set oscillator C, which is our drums, to a specific key range. So if we set them to like the very, very bottom down here, in theory, we should be able to write our drums in this section and then have all of our other sounds. Let's make a new clip here. Let's call this drums. And we go down to the keys that we set up. Yes! So now I can have the drums playing, but not also playing the other oscillators that are mapped as well, essentially separating everything. 
However, these drums are sounding a little thin, so... We've got the different buses. And what those are for is if you want to do effects. If I've got my drums going to bus 2, then we can add a little OTT. And while I was doing this, I noticed another thing, especially with the macros. So let's do macro 1 to the distortion of the drums. So when we go into clip mode, so we can go... That's right. Automation, baby. Wait, I have an idea. <laughs> this is kind of dumb. What if we made the noise oscillator a hat? Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to do this. We're going to go free. We're going to go LFO. We're going to do the old this aru. We're going to set the noise to the highest oscillator. Literally just like, <laughs> like here. Uh, I'll set this to bus two because this is our drums. Turn the volume up and... Oh, shit. Wait, wait, wait. Envelope one should not be on you. Should be a LFO. How do I split this? Do like this. Close enough. There we go. I wonder if we put it on pitch as well. Okay. We got some, what do you call it? Here we go. Synthesized hats. Oh, okay. I'm gonna do some next level movements here. Because I have mapped all of my sounds to one bus. If we do an LFO like this. All right, are you following me? Turn the volumes down on oscillator A and B. Let's put an LFO like this. Maybe not like all the way, but if we hit play. That is a side chain compressor. Let's go. Oh, we can get away with stuff like this. Hang on. We just have an ARP going. Now we do some sound design. Add these two to the macro knobs. Oh, wait. See, now, now I wish there was a way that I could map these to, like, the keyboard so I could actually play them. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, if we wanted to record it, we would go record like this. And now you can see it's getting the sound. I'm trying to perform it live, guys. Leave me alone. <laughs> Well, this was a fun experiment, there were some limitations that I found. I couldn't quite map the sidechain to the drums, so I was stuck with a 4-4 volume duck, which means sidechains for syncopated kick-dependent genres wouldn't be possible. Build up! Another limitation I found was not being able to map the launch clip buttons to any keys on my keyboard or MIDI controller, which led to a few awkward moments when performing the song through just mouse clicks. Wait, what if I put an LFO on that? Okay, I'm just goofing around now. If you know how to do either of these, please let me know in the comments. I don't have time to read the manual because I'm still editing this video. Also off stream, I made a few tweaks to some of the clips and sounds arrangement wise, uh, adding more variations in the drum clip, in the lead, and also mapping the sub oscillator, which I use for the bass sound, to a filter for a sort of a makeshift EQ and overall crunchier bass sound. If you want to hear the final product, I've linked it down below, and the preset will also be available on Patreon along with the full uncut version of this experiment. Subscribe if you want to keep seeing more videos from me. And thank you for watching all the way to the end. You a real one. Now go make some bangers.